Welcome back, Broncos. Uh, like we said at the top of the episode, we're going to be joined uh, today by a special guest. And the guest this week is going to be none other than Blanca Gonzalez. She is a staff writer here at the Poly Post and the author of The Amazing Piece, which is one of the focuses of today's episode. Andy, take it away. If anybody's read Blanca's great piece, uh, you'll know it's all about the election fair and how we're, they're going to be holding it during the school shutdown. So Blanca, if you want to give us like a little bit of background first off about just who's involved and who's organizing it and who, who's behind this, that way we can jump in uh, if you want to just give us that background. Yeah, of course. Um, so the people who are organizing um, the election fair um, is actually the California Center uh, for Ethics and Policy. They're collaborating with ASI, and um, the director for um, the center is uh, Alex Madva. He's part of the philosophy department. He's an associate professor at um, Cal Poly Pomona, and they're also collaborating with ASI. And they have um, they have guests uh, at the. They're going to be having guests at the election fair, such as the uh, League of Women Voters and NAACP. They'll all be there and. They also have um, groups and other organizations that um, either oppose or support um, each proposition and will help, um, you know, give us more information on, on each proposition. Well, that's really cool. It seems, like, it seems like it's a pretty diverse group of people that are holding this and it sounds like it'll be really beneficial. Um, since obviously I mentioned and everyone knows we're in the middle of a school lockdown, uh, how do you feel that the COVID-19 precautions will affect voter turnout? Do you think uh, it will affect how people are showing up to the polls? I think it will. I think it mainly will affect um, how many uh, older people, you know, go to um, go to the actual uh, polling places. Um, but I think that mo I'm hoping that most people um, try to send in their uh, ballots by mail um and just try to vote vote by vote by mail if that's what they're um the most comfortable with which um which i know you know a lot of people uh will be but um but you know overall i'm hoping that everybody feels encouraged to vote um especially you know young people um we have a, a really big voice if we use it and um i think it's really important for us to get involved especially in this election that just you know, is giving us a lot to think about. <laughs> no, definitely. Definitely. It, it's pretty interesting that you mentioned mail-in voting. Do you think that the rate of mail-in voting is going to increase this election just because of everything that's going on in the world right now? I'm hoping that it does. Um, also because, you know, we need to support the post office. Um, but I think that um, I think that it will be the most popular for, form of voting um, right now, just because of the um, of the pandemic and you know what we're all going through. Um, so I think that it will be probably one of the most um, used um, sources, you know, for voting. Definitely, I, I know if someone gives me the option to not leave my house, I'm going to take it. Right. Yeah. Of course. Um, do you think that this election fair um, is going to increase student voters showing up to the polls? Like, do you think it'll create some kind of background for them to get more informed and, and feel more passionate about what they're voting for? I'm hoping that it does, uh, you know, because um, Alex Madva, um, I, was, I was speaking with him and he seems really uh, passionate about what he's, the information that he's trying to um, uh, you know, give people and give um, students and not, I mean, actually not just students, the um, event is going to be open to the public. Mm. Um, so everybody is encouraged to, you know, tell other people to, um, to, you know, tell their families, their, their, their friends to let them know that this event is going on. Um, because they're gonna, they're gonna be explaining a lot of things about, about each proposition, and what a vote yes means, what a vote no means um for each one of them because you know sometimes that can also get challenging is for us to to know sometimes you know with the wording of propositions it could get challenging to know exactly what a vote yes means and what a vote no means um for each of them so the the election fair is gonna help clear that up for um for people you know for anyone who who shows up it's definitely something you want to take advantage of because i don't 
I know I'm not up to date on all the key issues all the time. Like I'm not following them nonstop. So it's definitely good that they're providing this space for people who are in an already insanely busy and chaotic year to be able to just get to the heart of the issues. So I definitely am excited about this. Yeah, and I think it's so important, like what you mentioned, Blanca, about um, the language, the language of how a lot of these uh, propositions are worded. Uh, it can be very confusing sometimes, sometimes maybe even like intentionally. Uh, so I, I think this form is going to be a really good resource for people, uh, not just students, but just, you know, people in general that attend to get a better, like a clear, concise idea of like, what does a vote yes or no mean on this proposition? And then people can decide for themselves, like, okay, I agree or disagree with that. And then they can decide like how they want to vote. So I think it's very important. Yeah, and you know, another important thing is um, at the event, you'll be able to see the kinds of groups that are um, supporting or opposing each proposition. And I think that that's also very important um, for people to look out for um, because you wanna know who you're, who you're standing with and who you're supporting and who's behind, you know, pushing, either pushing or, you know, not wanting to have each proposition, um, you know, pass. Um, but yeah, I think that's also something that uh, is really important that the election fair is going to be offering. Completely uh, agree. I, I think that's super important. Just like you said, uh, it's important to know who you're standing like with mm -hmm. or against and like what groups are supporting it, because it may seem like something that like you are in favor of, right, just based on like the wording, but then you kind of look around, you're like, wait, but like this group is supporting it. And then based on whatever context you have for them, that might change your opinion on it. You know, you may yeah. know like, oh, wait, wait a minute. Why are you supporting this? You know, and it may yeah. make you uh, second guess. So I think that's very important that it's going to give people that, you know, broader uh, perspective on it. Right, right, right. <clears throat> if, if students are going to be showing up to the polls more because of this ele uh, the election fair and just getting more involved and obviously election season is ramping up, uh, how do you feel about the accessibility of voting for students? Do you think it, there's, um, do, do you think there's more ways that it could be streamlined or made more accessible? Um, I think that, uh, well, I think that it's already accessible enough. I think that honestly, as um, younger people, we sometimes tend not to not to care too much or, you know, not to, uh, I don't want to say everybody because I know that there's people, you know, um, young people like us who, who, you know, care about voting and um, actually take that as something, you know, really important. Um, but there are a lot of people who don't really take advantage of, of all the resources that, um, that there actually are because um, Cal Poly was also hosting a, um, a constitution week. Um, I'm not sure how, uh, what their turnout was, but, um, they, they have a lot of resources, you know, for us to learn and for us to get informed. Um, and I'm not sure that we, that us as young people, um, take advantage of, of all those things. So I'm not sure that, um, having it be more accessible would make them turn out more i think that um maybe encouraging people and um i don't know maybe having you know um like uh, influencers um you know push for people to um to vote um maybe that's something that could that could help if they see other people that they admire you know doing you know voting and um doing you know their civic duty um that that that's a way that they'll get encouraged um other than that i don't think that um i don't really think that with with all of the different forms of voting that we have now that um it'll change um if if young people also we don't put um you know our effort and our cooperation it's definitely something that's in the voters hands mm -hmm. like you, you I, I totally agree that after a while, like it's up to the individual voter to show up and vote. Like, yeah, I, I would agree with uh, the core of that like sentiment and that like your point that there's a myriad of different like tools, right? Like the, there is a, a huge amount of accessibility in um, voting and registering to vote. It's just a matter of like, actually advocating and motivating people to get out there and use those. Um, and I, so, I, I mean, I agree with you on that front. Like there's only so much that they can do other than, you know, just voting for you. So you kind of have to right. take the initiative into your own hand. Um, I will say though, that getting this information out there, uh, which is why like we wanted to bring you on and why I think uh, mm -hmm. your piece in this form is so important is that 
yes, I agree. The tools are definitely out there uh, to take advantage of, but not many people know about the tools. So not many people know like that they have these resources to be able to use in these different avenues to register to vote. So I, that's why, again, I, I think you and your piece and this form are so important because getting an information out there to let people know, hey, this is how you do it. This is where you can get these resources is like critical to actually getting people to turn out, especially young people. Yeah, 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 of course. And I think that um, we can probably um, create like a bigger turnout if we also, you know, if just one person pushed another person to vote, you know, and to get involved, um, I think that that would make a huge difference. Um, so I think that it really is about, yeah, just influencing other people and, um, and pushing other people to, to get out there and to go um, check out the resources, check out everything that, that's out there already. Absolutely. Well, in, in, t in terms of resources and talking about resources, do you know of any other ways that CPP is um, providing to help students stay informed and help them kind of get involved in their community? Um, yes. So the CPP um, Poli Sci Club, which um, everybody can find at, in, their, um, in their Instagram at Cal Poli Sci. It's um, C-A-L-P-O-L-I-S-C-I. Um, they are also um, developing a voter guide, um, which will include um, what it means to be anti-racist in, um, in the local level and in the congressional level. Um, it, they're, they're also gonna include um, the, the propositions and a little breakdown for each proposition um, and what their e-board's position is. Um, for each. Um, so I think that that's also something that, um, that, you know, people can look forward to. And um, if you guys follow them on Instagram, they also post a lot of informational um, things on their, on their stories, on their, they're very active. Um, so I really encourage everybody to, um, to follow them um, because they really do help out a lot. And they're always also willing to speak um, with people and um, the president, Natalie Hernandez, I believe her last name is, um, she's also very friendly and she is um, very approachable and she's willing to speak with anyone. And um, when I spoke with her, actually, she told me that, um, that poli sci students could be a very good resource to, um, like if you have any questions about, um, about voter information um, and stuff like that, that, you know, she thinks poli poli sci students um, on campus are could be really good at explaining certain things. Nice. So, so in terms of like students still getting involved with political discourse and the political process, even though we're all on Zoom right now, you would say get involved through the clubs that are already established on campus. Yes. Yes, I would definitely tell them to do that. Um, a lot of clubs are being extra. Um, extra present on through their Instagram or through their um, social media, other social media pages. Um, so I would say, you know, start following, start following clubs, start following, um, you know, these people who are there to help us and, you know, their resources that we also should take advantage of um, while we're at Cal Poly. So I think that's a great point. Um, and it's actually really reassuring and uh, nice to hear that the clubs are like staying active and staying involved online, mm -hmm. even though like, you know, everyone's going to be at home through Zoom. Um, is there like a, a resource that students can go to if they want to check out like what clubs are available? Like, uh, would they go through like the poly uh, side department? Like, uh, is there any way for people to get in touch with the, the various groups or to know about them? Um, I think um, if, it, if they're looking for a list of clubs, um, Cal Poly Pomona has um, a list, um, an updated list, I believe it is, um, because it also tells, tells you what clubs are active this quarter, um, uh, sorry, this semester. Um, it, they tell you um, wh which are active and which are um, non-active. Um, but there's also um, there's also a Cal Poly um, Republican student um, Instagram account. Um, I couldn't find a Democratic one, um, and I believe that it's because I um, they might not be active this semester. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure about that since it's an election year. Um, it you know it, I would think that they're active. 
Um, but I couldn't find um, their Instagram page either. So I'm thinking maybe they're, they're not active. Um, but the, um, there's, there's a list and, and you can search it up um, on the Cal Poly page. Um, you can also search up uh, uh, political um, clubs on campus, um, stuff like that. And then definitely through the political science department, you can also go ahead and ask um any of them if they know of any clubs that you can reach out to 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 get more information and yeah stuff like that okay perfect and if we've uh i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and look for those links after the show and we'll be sure to include that for students that way if they want to have that resource and that avenue to find these clubs that they can okay for sure yeah i just can't look it up right now because it's on my phone and my internet is still gone and no worries <laughs> <laughs> I can attest to the uh, to the following of clubs on campus like I followed a whole bunch of clubs over the summer on Instagram and stuff and it really does help create a sense of community when we don't really it's easy to not have one right now right yeah that's true it I feel like everybody's you know isolated but trying to come together online yeah. um, and it's just crazy it's just I mean, hey, one upside to being online during an election season is now we don't have to avoid eye contact with solicitors as they stand in every area of campus. Of campus, yes. Pamphlets. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We can't I, avoid that. That's true. Yes, I would actually specifically bring a pair of sunglasses, even if it wasn't sunny, just so that I could wear it and I would not have to make eye contact with any of the solicitors. Headphones. I would put on my headphones. headphones. Yeah. <laughs> headphones in, sunglasses on, head straight ahead. Like it's headphones. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward with my headphones in, not playing any music. I'm just walking, just going to class. You will be, you will be weighed down with pamphlets if you engage with any of them. <laughs> that exactly. is so true. That is so so true. Do Do you guys? I don't know if you guys were were there already, but um, there was a year at at Cal Poly. I think it was maybe two years ago um that there was uh there was a guy standing in front of the um in front of the library and he was um preaching about about women should go back to you know the kitchen and women should go yeah. back to you were you there uh, yeah i remember <laughs> seeing that guy i still have it on my snapchat i still have it in my snapchat memories <laughs> Just everyone watching this know, as much as it sucks being online, we at least don't have to deal with this right now. You know what I mean? If it's not making you whack, you're getting ripped off. So, so here you got, here you got, you know, smoking marijuana. Well, it makes us trip. Well, God wants us to be sober-minded. God wants us to look at Him all day long, every day, and say, "What a great person!" Right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, I mean, since it's an election season, if we want to talk just very briefly about sort of the um the general election that's happening. Obviously, we're recording this on a Thursday morning. Um, I guess Thursday afternoon, but it's still morning to me. I wake up <laughs> at 11. Um, but Tuesday night, we had the presidential debate. And I think it's safe to say the nation and the world is still feeling pretty hungover from it. Um, In more ways than one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I am amazed that Nick is is upright right now still. Like You're telling me, I, I didn't think I was going to recover after... Uh... The amount of uh, let's say liquid courage it took to get through that debate <laughs> you were not the only one <laughs> but um obviously everyone is super disheartened we're not going to get into like oh how did you feel it went because everyone had the same reaction for we, all that's how, yeah, that's how yeah. we all lost yeah 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 it's it's like alien versus predator whoever wins we lose um <laughs> exactly. but what was some what is something you would say to disheartened voters after tuesday night what what is some like words of encouragement that you would give to disheartened voters? Um, I think that the most important thing that we need to take out of the um, the debate is that this um, this election is going to be one of you know the most important um, in history, and I think that this election is mainly going to be about defending our um, democracy um, because. You know, so many things were said, and it, it was it was too crazy to you know get into it. But um, definitely, um, that I think I think that everybody should take it as you know this didn't go well. Um, so let's see what we can do about it, and let's all work hard to reach a not even a middle ground because I don't even know that there could be a middle ground be between you know completely you know two extremes um but 
I think that we definitely, as a as a as a country, we need to work towards um, getting better presidential candidates. <laughs> you know, learning from this, <laughs> learning from this experience, um, and learning from this uh, election that we should have better options. Absolutely agree. Completely agree. I, I totally agree. I just want to say, back in 2016, South Park called this. <laughs> <laughs> South Park called it. Go back and watch the episode. They called it. Um, but in terms of like, obviously we're talking about the debates and it was incoherent and nobody could even understand what was going on. Um, what are some ways, what are some tips that you would have for voters to kind of get past? I'm going to use like a very generous term and call it mudslinging. <laughs> like that's being very generous for what was going on on Tuesday. But how, what, what are some tips you would give to potential voters uh, to get past all that and actually get to the heart of the key issues that they're going to be voting on? Um, you know, I would say to definitely look up what each um, each candidate's position is on big topics, for example, on um, climate change, um, uh, diversity, you know, um, the, all these big topics that, that we really need to pay attention to in, um, in our society. Um, and I think that we need to uh, like do that research and see where each candidate stands and you know vote for whoever ha has you know the same values as you do or similar you know because i don't think that any of us have the same values as any of the candidates <laughs> definitely it's 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 definitely getting harder and harder to uh to get past all that and Mm -hmm. actually just get to what they're talking about especially after Tuesday like I had no idea what any of them were talking about yeah right. you know it kind of seemed like they were just pointing fingers and you did this and you did that and you don't do this and you don't do that and it, this is your fault and that was your fault you know mm -hmm. it was it was just kind of and then they wouldn't let each other finish well um yeah it was it was just crazy it, it seemed more as of a entertainment show than anything else I mean, well, welcome to the world of televised politics. It's been this way since Kennedy. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, I completely feel you on that, Blanca. That's how <laughs> more than ever uh, these debates have, have felt. Uh, mm -hmm. On Tuesday, it was just pure spectacle. I'm like, wow, there really isn't yeah. any policy going on. Um, I don't think anybody's learning or coming away from this with the change position. This is just, it's just a clown show. Uh, but we'll, we'll save, like me and Andy, we got a lot to say on that. So we'll save for the end. Um, but I, I want to echo the sentiments uh, that you were saying and uh, trying to jumping off of the question that Andy threw out there. Uh, one resource, and we've been like plugging this throughout the episode, um, is Ballotpedia. Uh, I think Ballotpedia.org is a great resource uh, for people to take advantage of in order to look up the ballots, uh, and, like the propositions that are going to be on the ballot, but more uh, broadly uh, and specifically, you can look up different candidates, uh, their position, their history. So just like you said, Blanca, encouraging people to go to the uh, campaign sites for these candidates and then cross-referencing what they uh, hold, like the positions they hold on that site with Ballotpedia to like look up, you know, more details about it. So I think that's uh, it's definitely something people should do, just like Andy said, to get past the, the mudsling, to put it lightly. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, I guess since we're um, kind of getting into more of the election stuff, I just wanted to ask you, like, because you wrote the article and you talked to a couple of different sources and everything, what was the general vibe that you got from the campus community about the election coming up? Is it more disheartened? Is it encouraged? Is it, you know, we're going to fight for what we want to do? Or is it just, like, like, what would you say the general vibe among the, the campus is about the election? I think that there's a big sense of um, emergency to um, to do what is what's the best for um, again for our democracy um, and to and to defend you know our country um, because I think that um, a lot of a lot of the people that I that I spoke with wanted to um, encourage just keep encouraging students keep encouraging young people. Um, because um, I believe um, a lot of, I think the majority of the registered voters this year are um, younger people. Um, I think they're millennials and younger, I believe. Um, so 
I think that it's it's very important to, to keep in, encouraging them. And I think that that's the sense that I got from everybody that I spoke with on campus is that they just want to push people to actually go out and, and vote and actually, um, you know, get involved. Um, so I think that it was more of a sense of emergency and a sense of, you know, a little bit like scared that, um, that we might not have a very good, you know, turnout, that it might be, you know, just a, another crazy election. <laughs> Definitely. I, I mean, de our, my last question is about the election and it's more uh, pointed towards you as an individual. How are you planning to spend election night? Do you have your plans yet? Um, yes, so I am, I am registered um, to vote, but I also registered to um, be a uh, volunteer at a, um, at a polling place. Nice. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm also going to um, uh, volunteer for the election fair, mm -hmm. um, just so that, you know, I could be more involved and so that I can um, keep pushing just more students, more young people. Um, I don't think that I can stress that enough. Um, and I've been using also my social media platforms to, um, to encourage people um, that hopefully, you know, if there's anybody out there that um, uh, any of any of my followers that I can at least push, you know, just at least one. Um, I think that it would it would make a difference. You know, it, there's always a person who thinks that their vote won't um, won't make a difference, but it all comes, you know, it all clusters together at the end of so many people who think that way. Um, so I think that um, uh, pushing people through different social media platforms and um, and volunteering at these kinds of events are, are one of the ways that I can personally help, you know, um, push more people out to vote. Beautifully said. Uh, that's amazing. I mean, you're doing amazing work. The fact that you're volunteering for both the fair and just helping out with uh, polling places in general. Mm -hmm. I think that's amazing. Uh, you're doing far more in that regard than uh, I am. I think I'm going to be spending uh, election day drinking uh, no matter <laughs> who wins. Uh, yeah. But I'm thankful there's people like you out there, Blanca, that are uh, doing that extra work to help encourage people and advocating for people to register and vote. So we deeply appreciate that. And uh, with that, we bring our interview to a close. Again, I want to thank you so much, Blanca, for joining us today. Uh, you are phenomenal. Uh, you are a great resource. And I encourage everybody to check out Blanca's piece, a CPP Prepares for the 2020 Election in the Poly Post, as always. You can find her there. You can follow her on Twitter. I'm going to have her handle up, up there on the screen again. So you can uh, make sure you follow her to keep up with the latest and greatest news on her. And yeah, Blanca, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Of course. Uh, and go out and vote. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you so much again, Blanca. Uh, we will catch you later. And with that, Broncos, we're going to move on to our next segment. Broncos, we will catch you on the next episode. Thank you so much again for uh, spending time with me and Andy. I know this is the meaty episode. Uh, we're going to try to break it up for you guys, but hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you go out there and register to vote. Hopefully you bring your friends and family to join you. And with that, we're going to catch you on the next episode. Uh, be sure to check out all those links. Follow me and Andy on Twitter, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye, everyone. Take care, everybody.